Hello guys and welcome back to Rise of Prussia with our Maria Theresa campaign here, playing as Prussia in the First Silesian War. I think we've done pretty much our entire turn in the last episode as we've moved on to Breslau and begun besieging it. We've offered them the honors of war. Hopefully they accept it. Apparently it triggers its effect in the last turn, so Technically, I might have to elongate this siege a little bit in order to see that come to fruition, but it may give us more time to replenish our cohesion, our losses, because I did kind of just rush over here through the winter and claim control of these locations to help my supply move through them. May or may not have been a smart idea, but let's hit end turn, move into late March. Hope the winter doesn't creep back up here somehow. That was a pretty quick turn. Nothing happened. We've inflicted some hits to the enemies during the siege which didn't really do anything. Their power stayed pretty much the same. We have two breaches in it, so we could technically assault it right now, but I do want to see if they just take the honors of war, you know? Some of our units have finished training, so if we take a look at our replacements, yep, we now have line infantry. That's good, that's good. Uh, I would like to recruit another elite infantry, so let's go ahead and recruit that now. Anything else? Uh, just some training of units that are nearly finished. Oh, but some of these are finished, actually. We have some militia finishing up. Let's go ahead and move them down here. Where are the other ones? There's another one here. Let's move it down. And there's another one here, which we can move down there as well. Take 11 days to get down there. Now we're just going to meet them up, basically get them ready to move forward and I don't know, either join the front line or stay back as a kind of defensive formation. How is our overall situation here. His army is good and dandy. This army's cohesion is now perfect, which is awesome. This one is almost back up to strength. The artillery is a little lacking. This one also basically fine and dandy. Even his losses have been replenishing throughout this. Well, one way or another, we're going to get this next turn, hopefully, whether I assault it or give them the honors of war. But if I could get this without the fight, that would be perfect. I've done pretty much everything I can this turn, except I do have enough engagement points to make a decision. I'll spend that on the light infantry, and let's go ahead and end the turn and hope that they accept the honors of war. So unfortunately, they did not accept the honors of war, so it will take one more turn to kind of bash our way into here. We have an unstoppable force outside. I don't really care what they have in there. They're not going to stop this, especially not with three breaches in the fortifications. That's just going to make our lives even easier. That does mean we may have wasted a turn, but maybe, who knows, that rest and recovery may have been perfect and what we needed to ensure preventing severe losses on our side. We have trained those three Prussian light replacements, that's good. More of our units are getting finished that we're recruiting. Units as in the depot units, as in giving us more replacements, which are needed because, as we've seen, I think the recovery, yeah, the recovery of these units has been kind of slim. These are elite infantry. We haven't had enough elite infantry to replace them. Are these all elite infantry that are injured? I think they are. What about this one? These one are line infantry. Line and elite is what we definitely just haven't had enough of, but the numbers are definitely starting to pour in now. I'm going to go ahead and recruit another elite infantry. Whoa, whoops, I keep forgetting that does that. And we got one, two, three militia units here. Our Pontonier here is done. That's awesome. Uh, whose army do I want that to join? Uh, who's got a big army but no Pontonier? That would be you. You have a big army but no Pontonier. Let's, uh, yeah, let's give you the Pontonier. Where, where'd he go? Pontonier, you need to go down here and merge with him. You should be there by the end of the turn, actually, surprisingly. We do also have some more militia finishing up here, which is gonna take a while to get down here. Oh, actually not as long as you might think. We're gonna drag this one over here as well. I'm just kind of dragging them all down there so they can meet up with each other. Let's merge these guys together. We got another one finishing up. And that should be all of them. Yes, that is. Right now, we're not in any danger in the rear, but it's still smart, I think, in order to prepare them for reinforcing the rear of our lines. But without any further ado, let's end our turn, move into the next turn, and witness the assault, which hopefully will go without issue, thanks to how much time we spent, essentially, besieging it and putting holes in it. They actually have a general here. When I was testing the game out, this general is actually running around the countryside for the entire game, 
causing me nothing but issues. I, I've never... I didn't see him actually fortify in here before when I initially tried the game, but get a pretty decent force. If they didn't accept the honors of war, then hopefully we can at least basically kill this guy here. It does seem to be going. Yeah, on our side here, we did lose one element of siege troops line infantry, one line infantry unit. One element lost, not the worst thing in the world. I am training more and more line infantry, which should be able to basically replace this in basically no time. They lost over 8,000 men and 434 horses to our 2,000, almost 400 men to 209 horses. We're playing this a little ballsy, in my opinion, but look how many hits we dealt compared to suffer. This may or, or may not be rushing it, as I am imagining we're doing. Some people may play this game going a lot faster. How the hell is there snow? It's late April. How is the snow back? There was no snow just a moment ago. God damn it, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, but here's that battle report. We took 382 companies. Every one of these companies is 100 men. What is what is even that math? Apparently we took 38,000 companies, or sorry, units, like individuals, prisoner, which is amazing to me because I don't, they didn't even have that many troops there. So I, I don't know how this works, but apparently that's the amount we took. Maybe I'm just, you know, reading it wrong again. I don't know. So many of their units were routed. They were dug in, but we got a bunch of war supply here for winning this, and we knocked out a pretty important, in my opinion, enemy force here. I mean, it's the biggest enemy force I've seen so far. At, oh, did we capture a supply train? Oh, yeah, I think we captured a supply train. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Whose army should I stick this into? I guess I could stick this into... I can either stick this in with Frederick, or I could stick this in with this man here. What's his name? Oh, this guy's name is Frederick as well. Frederick Wilhelm von Holstein Beck. I guess they're just both conveniently named Frederick. Frederick and Frederick. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to give this supply train to the other not-as-epic Frederick, because he's actually got a bigger army, and I think I plan on using him more independently which means I might want to give him another piece of artillery here. We can't actually recruit any new artillery through this campaign, but yeah, let me just drag and drop one of these artillery into his army. So we've now taken this, but do remember, the moment we step out of here, we lose control over it. So we need to figure out someone to leave behind. I might just pick another Hussar unit. Yeah, I'm going to leave this Hussar, Hussar, however you say it, unit in the city behind to basically just keep it occupied. We do have some standalone cavalry here. What are these? Curasars? Curasars? I don't know how to say that. And Dragoons. And I know some of our units could use some more cav. Maybe. Yeah, he could use two more cav. And you have someone that could as well. I'm going to take both of these units. I'm actually going to drag them over here. Kind of a, a trade, let's say, for the artillery. And we're going to put these units into this brigade. And now that brigade is maxed out. And I think our command should all still be pretty good. Yes, it is looking pretty nice. Looks like two of our generals are promotable to a new rank. One of which is Kurt von Schwern, 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 German. We come down here and we can promote him, which will make him a more effective general. That's good. Who is the other guy? Promotable to a new rank, Johan von Waddell. I can't even click him. Who the hell is he? Johan von Waddell. Here he is. He's a minor. He's a minor uh, general. Well, it says I can promote him. You have to detach it to a separate force. Oh, I can only promote him if I detach him to a separate force. That's kind of annoying. Because I think that means I have to leave him out of the force for a turn in order to promote him. Well, that's fine. We just won't promote him then. We do have some engagement points again, which we can use to recruit some stuff. So I'm gonna get, let's see, uh, let's just go with the regular Prussian artillery. We can get the heavy one later when we have more of an opportunity to do so. I'm gonna take all the militia we've recruited so far and I'm gonna go basically toss it into this region and tell them to enter the structure upon arriving. This dude is almost arrived down here. I'm just gonna kind of leave him be. He can stay there for now. In fact, you can just you can enter upon arriving. Let me tell you to do that. 
In terms of other replacements, let's see, do we need anything? We are going through the elite infantry. We are recruiting too, so I mean, it's not the worst. We're not recruiting any more line infantry, so I probably do want to recruit some more line infantry. Well, oh, god damn, I always forget that it doesn't back out of that menu. Usually in Birth of America, Escape just backed out of menus. It didn't back you to the main menu. <laughs> In terms of victory points, we're doing all right. We're up to 255, they're up to 434. I think they started with like two to 300. So we're definitely gaining on them. I think losing that uh, unit must have hurt them too. Their morale is now down to 97. And I think at the start, they were getting a bonus to their just combat effectiveness, their production, their supply, their cohesion, all that jazz, because they had a high morale, but we've lowered it by 23 points and raised our own by about 18, I think, or no, 23, I think. Yeah, something like that. So we're now actually getting a bonus to our own cohesion, which is good, because that will help us keep up the offensive here. And right now, we do have a bit of a interesting situation here. We're starting to split off into taking other locations. And as we see, every single one of these places has some kind of fort. So this is going to be fun to take at the... Is the, the best way I can put it. So we'll take Frederick Wilhelm here, and we'll move him down to Schweidnitz which is, let's take a look at it, Schweidnitz. This is a strategic town. It is not a objective town, but it's still important to take. Again, I don't know what you need to actually win this scenario, so I'm just gonna assume you need everything. <laughs> everything it tells you you need, you know, like 11 out of 11. Some of these I know don't require you to take everything, but this one appears to want me to do that. So I'll send him down here by himself because his army is the beefiest out of all of ours, actually, it may be smart to send him down here with this man, because his army is pretty weak comparatively, since I've taken some units out of here. I'm almost half tempted to just take this guy's army and put it into other armies, in fact, but no, I'll just leave him as his own independent unit. It's efficient, one way or another. We'll take better Frederick, Frederick the Great, we'll move him to Brieg, and we will move, where's our other man here? Uh, here we go. We'll move this guy as well. Okay, actually I had synchronized movement on so now all their orders got reset because I am a dum-dum So let's reset this again. You go there. That's gonna take you 11 days and you Can go there. Let's turn off synchronized movement for you guys There we go. So now we have two armies going this way. They're, go they're all gonna arrive there at different times, 11 days. Oh no, they're gonna arrive there at the same time. That's cool, six days versus 12 days. Why are you moving so slow? They will arrive and they will begin their sieges. This one only has a level one fort, so hopefully it should go pretty quick. I may choose to assist the siege here when it starts to make this go by faster. As far as I understand right now, these flashing cities are our objectives, whereas the solid cities are strategic objectives. I don't know if one is more or less important than the other, but when I first played it, I remember I thought it was the other way around because, you know, a deep, like, filled-in color seems more like an objective than some thinner, flashing color, right? At least that was my logic. That's basically everything I can do this turn, so let's proceed to the next turn, and hopefully the snow will be completely gone by this turn because, my god, this snow is proving to be a bitch and a half here. What's happening here? So we have full control over this area. We're still in offensive here. Let's move you to defensive. You're gonna take one more day to arrive. I guess he got like slowed down or something. Whereas this man has already arrived and begun a siege. He doesn't have any artillery though. So there may not actually be a hole in here by the next turn. I'm gonna take him out of offensive mode because he'll recover cohesion faster in defensive mode. And moving through the winter did hurt his cohesion a little bit. It hurt everyone's a little bit. So let's go ahead and put everyone on defensive. You guys seem to have been less affected, with the exception of your artillery, which never really fully recovered to begin with. We're on turn 10 now, and it says that 16 turns remain. I guess that means I can hit end turn 16 more times. As you see, we've actually gone through the rest of our elite infantry. I'm actually, I'm going through this not very cautiously, I guess, with how quickly I'm going through my units. We're already recruiting two of these, only one of these, but uh, I'm gonna throw another elite unit down to recruit for the time being leave the militia garrisons alone for the time being and try to make sure we're refilling our unit stocks as quickly as we can because I think it's probably pretty important. What is this thing? It has a, a G, GR on it? Oh, because this is like elite infantry. These are the grenadiers, I see. 
I don't think much of our troops have any losses. We've repaired just about all the losses that we have sustained on our units, with the exception maybe of the one element we've lost, but that element may also have been reassigned from our replacements. Let me tell you, when I tested this game out, I didn't go through replacements nearly as quick because I was playing really, really cautiously. I'm playing a little ballsier now. I keep accidentally hitting escape. Oh my God. We're gonna go into the decisions here and we're gonna help our sieges along here. At least we're gonna help this one along. We're gonna go and we're going to mine. We're gonna put a mine on Bree. We cannot actually put a mine on this siege. For what reason? because we don't have a sapper element there. We would have a sapper element there, but it's in this army, not this one. This one doesn't really have a cost, except that you need a sapper present to use it. And basically what it does is it guarantees that you get a hole in the fortress the next turn, on top of any holes you would put in it otherwise. This one, I'm not so sure how quickly we're gonna get a hole placed in here, so I'm not so keen on rushing it because this guy's gonna arrive in the beginning of the turn we could very well put a hole in this fortress the next turn it's only a size one fort how much of a you know distraction could this really end up being i don't know and we're gonna hit end turn and go into late may now 15 days of basically uneventful stuff looks like however we didn't even need to siege brig also the, the army here did not put a single hole in this fortification, which technically we don't need a hole in the fortification. As you can remember, we can assault without putting holes in the fortifications. Brig actually surrendered. Did I get to keep my mine? I either got to keep my mine or I got another mine because Brig actually surrendered to us without us needing to actually fight for it. I love when that happens, at least to me. I haven't experienced that happening to my own units outside of Birth of America yet. So when it happens to me though, I like it because we just got to skip an assault and we saved a day, basically. If you take a look here, we'll see while taking the fortress, we got supply carts and crates of ammunition. Austria is around the besieged city of Prague. They keep putting fortifications around Prague and it says it's besieged, but it's not. So I don't know what that's about. They're still imposing requisitions. Uh, surrendered to us in Brieg, losing two units. We gained 14 VP and one morale point. That's awesome. One thing before I end this turn is I need to leave someone here. I'm, I've just remembered how stupid this game is. I need to leave a cavalry or some kind of worthless infantry here, basically, in order to keep control of it, basically. I guess I'll just leave this Dragoon unit that is in Frederick II's army and I'll just toss him in the structure. Again, cavalry, not very good for defending. In fact, let's take, hmm, let's see. So let me unlock this unit. I'm gonna give you a militia man. I'm gonna, yeah, let's put a second militia man in there. Lock that off and take the rest of these three militia and bring them over to Brieg. Enter the city upon arrival. This cavalry will ensure that we keep generating victory points off of this objective. I have to do my best to not forget to, well, you know, do that. Oh, I'm accidentally moving this unit out of this region. That's bad. You stay in this region. Very bad. I've gone ahead and despite saying I'm not going to throw a mine here, I've thrown a mine on this siege because I just, I don't trust my units to make an actual breach in the fortification and in this instance i'd rather the breach be made than not be made but i think that's all for this turn here so let's go ahead and hit end turn and move into what comes after may early june i think it's early june comes next and all right we are in early june we have prussian hussars an event confronted by numerous and better hussars that are more and more daring frederick has to reinforce the squadrons of hussars to stop the destruction of his communication lines. And this has given me, ooh, a Dragoon unit and three Hussar units. That's really, really good because you know that shit's inevitable for leaving, like, not even for fighting, for leaving one cavalry behind me to ensure, here we go, let's mix and match these, to ensure that we retain control over every location that we take. We only got one breach in this fortification here so thank god i put that mine down i don't think having it as offensive or defensive affects your ability to put holes in a fortification because i think we had all of our units in defensive mode at breslau and we were still putting holes in the fortification maybe it's like a specific kind of arty that does it or maybe we just got unlucky you know what i really don't know 
I figure the siege works would be enough to put a hole in the fortification all by itself, but it doesn't say anything about that. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about that. And it realistically, it just, it shouldn't, it should not affect it. What, what unit did I select? Holstein, artillery, okay, artillery. Yeah, it has guns, so it should be enough. I guess we just got unlucky with putting a hole in the fortification. That being said, let's change our units here over to the assault and hopefully take this location next turn. This siege has started in Glatz. I'm gonna go ahead and put another mine onto Glatz to ensure that we get two holes in the fortification quicker so that I can assault it with less casualties sooner, especially because I, I don't know, I have kind of moved some units off from him. His stack's not as strong as it has been. That being said, this garrison is pretty weak. And let's see about these cavalry. What can we do with them? So they're gonna come down here, obviously. But this is where they're probably going to need to split off. So one of the Hussars is going to go here because and enter upon arrival. Because we should have the city by that point. We are going to need to leave a cavalry in here in order to take the location. If we take this, then we're going to need another cavalry unit to kind of back that up. So I'm going to send one of them over to reinforce with him over here in Namslau in the middle of the siege. That way we have someone to leave at this city. And I'm going to send the rest of these cavalry over to merge with our big boy leader, Frederick II, because unlike all the rest of these armies, he doesn't have cavalry units. Well, he might not. No, he does. But Frederick does not have cavalry units within his own unit to kind of leave behind. The rest of these, I can just split up these brigades and leave some dragoons or other kinds of cavalry behind. I don't have that luxury right now with Frederick, so I might as well send the rest of the two over with him. In fact, I may need to end up sending him more anyway. I may want to maybe split off one of these brigades to go with him. I don't know. I'm not sure about that, so I'm just gonna leave things as they are right now. Cavalry move pretty fast as it is, so I don't think I really need to worry about it. Let's see what we have in terms of replacements. We only have four engagement points. That's a shame. Oh, heavy artillery training. I could have sworn I did this already. Maybe I tried it and I just didn't have the engagement points. I don't know. I could have sworn that I'd done it. Maybe I'm just misremembering. Uh, we could still use more replacements of line and elite infantry. And I think we're just basically busy recruiting them. Yeah, we're just basically busy recruiting units. Uh, we don't have anywhere that, that can actually recruit any more replacements. So I guess I'll just go ahead and spend this on recruiting more small militia garrison. Three, I guess. No, wait, no, yeah. Three is all I can afford to recruit, so that's all I will recruit. That should be everything for this turn. So let's go into late June and hope everything goes according to plan. All right, the assault has begun for Schweidnitz. And it was a success, who would have guessed? We outnumbered them like 30,000 to 512. God or 820. God damn, I didn't realize we had this many units. Not gonna lie. Did not realize we had this many units. We have two breaches in the fortifications here. The cavalry arrived a little out of breath. We're gonna set Frederick II to assault Glatz next turn. We're also gonna utilize a decision to ensure that we get a breach in the fortification over here. This guy only has one artillery piece, so I'm just gonna expend the siege works on him to make sure he gets that breach it only costs five war supply. We have three of them. So far, things are going pretty well. I'm going to take this smaller army, which I've, you know, gutted a tiny amount. I'm going to move it over to Glatz as well. It's going to be on the offensive so that he's going to essentially help from a distance, even if he doesn't get there in time, which he shouldn't. The assault should start on the first day anyway. I'm also going to take this Hussar here. I'm going to merge it with this fort battery and stick it inside of the structure so that we maintain control of, over this even after leaving it. I'm going to take our bigger army here, which does seem to be in good condition, put it on defense for the time being, and we're going to march it down here to Koingratz, Koingratz, like so, because flashing, I think flashing is our objective cities, yes? Yes, Koingratz, here we go, yep. Flashing is one of our objective cities, so we're going to want to make sure we take this. His army is very strong. Fredericks is a little weakened, so that's why I'm sending this to reinforce Fredericks. Kurt is so off in the distance, I'm just not concerned that he would even need <laughs> reinforcements as things stand. I'm just gonna let him sit around for a turn anyway. As you see, we have some reinforcements or replacements arriving. Austria is imposing more and more requisitions. I'm curious what their status is. 
So we're actually, yep, we're doing a good job catching up to them in victory points. We've gained another 100 in a time frame where they've gained like, I don't know, 50 to 70. I think only like 50. So we're making good progress on them and we're accumulating more and more every time we take a new city. We do have enough engagement points. I'm going to start doing the heavy artillery replacements. Hope that goes well. We have elite and line infantry replacements now, which is good, thank God. Just in case, I'm gonna start recruiting a little bit more elite infantry over here in Magdeburg. Since Glogau seems to be mainly safe, I'm gonna take its unit here and I'm going to move it down to this location. It's militia that I trained. I'm gonna tell them to enter the structure upon arrival, just so it can stay a little bit more fortified than it is. Cause again, we don't need militia quite this far back. We're doing fine. I've yet to even spot the main Austrian force. We've gone through all of our units. I think that's basically all the actions we're gonna take for this turn. What's the time? We're now halfway through. We're on turn 13 of 13. And we're making, hopefully, some pretty good process. Our morale's up to 136, Austrian's at 94. I'm hoping that we're doing well, <laughs> at the very least. If not as good as we can, we are doing very good in terms of our combat losses. Despite of how aggressive I feel like I'm being, they've lost twice of what we've lost, and we have a good amount of prisoners of war we've taken. Not that I think that actually affects anything. So let's proceed to the next turn, moving into the next month, early July, and see how this siege goes, or this assault, I should say. So we barely lost anyone. We... What? 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 It's a stalemate. <laughs> they called it a stalemate. But we clearly won, as you can see. We took over Glatz, even if they are calling this a stalemate. What did we get here? So we got some fort batteries. Let's put those away. Put that into defensive mode, make sure they're actually defending themselves. Merge this militia unit that we sent over here. We got another Austrian unit here, actually. And, oh, this is more than just a unit. This is more than just a unit, guys. This looks like quite a bit. This dude looks almost like the guy. In fact, I wonder if this is the same guy that we saw up here when we were sieging Breslau. It's the same exact portrait. I don't know if that's just coincidence or if he escaped the siege, but I don't know if what we have chilling right here is going to be enough to take this guy on. And he is unfortunately sitting on top of one of my objectives. So in order to prepare for that, I'm gonna do something a little, I guess, interesting here, let's call it. I'm going to take these two units here. I'm gonna move them over to this army corps. Those were the two cavalry I got, and I'm instead gonna take this man who actually has a cavalry force of his own, and I'm gonna move him over to Frederick's force. He actually doesn't have a full cavalry force, so I'm gonna take these dragoons here. I'm gonna move them over and beef up this force. There we go. Now Frederick's force is a little more powerful. We've cleared this one out of Cav so we can bring him over here to meet up with this man. And then we're just gonna kind of sit here and recover and I believe we can let some supply come in here. Yes. While we prepare to move both of these forces down here because I think this is a really sizable chunk of the Austrian force. Hopefully I am sending enough. Hopefully I'm not sending too little. It's gonna be a combined total of about 2,800, 2,900 in power. Judging by this amount of brigades, comparing it to the brigades I have between the two of these units, I don't think we're gonna run into any excessive issues. If anything, it may just be like a one-on-one -on -one even kind of fight here. But the sieges must continue and we have now a hole in the wall to attack Namslau, so I'm gonna send Kurt on the assault to break down this fort. As the garrison here is tiny, we have everything we need and we gotta keep going. Frederick, on the other hand, is going to get sent over here to Nies, Nessi, Nessi? I don't know how to say this. It's another one of our objective cities. And we are going to, well, it has a size two fort, so we're not gonna do anything yet. I guess we're just gonna send him. And I can't actually forget. I gotta make sure I don't forget to leave a unit here. Okay, so you know that Hussar we just moved over to... What is this guy's name, anyway? Herb Prince? Oh man, this is why I keep saying this guy instead of specifying. We're gonna take this out, actually, and we're going to put it in the city and merge it in there with the fort battery. And we have some militia finishing up right now, which should be the perfect candidates, actually, to be sent to Glaz, Glatz, and fortify it, or help fortify it, anyway. Here's the other ones. Uh, arrive, enter. They'll, it'll take them two turns to get there, I think. 
but we have time. We don't have to worry about an attack on Glatz for the time being. We don't have too much in the way of resources right now, so I'm actually just going to save our resources. No recruitment. We don't have any real decisions to do that we need to do, and I think we've done everything we're going to do for this turn. I also think that we have a nice full episode here. We have now, I believe, less than half the turns to go. Maybe one or two more episodes and we'll have this completely finished up with? We'll see. I know we have a pretty major battle coming up here. See these little dots here? That indicates the strength of the army we're going up against. And while this matches up, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing by sending only, quote unquote, only this many units. We'll have to see next episode. But for now, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>